Okay, this is a 25-year-old gentleman um, who uh, is now two weeks down the line following a penetrating injury to the anterior shoulder area. He presented with um, a vascular injury as well as neurological deficit. He was taken as an emergency to theater and a uh, hand surgery uh, team was called. Uh, an end-to-end -end repair of the auxiliary uh, subclavian artery was performed. So really what we want to do is focus on the examination. Uh, as I've said, when you, when you get an injury to the infraclavicular plexus uh, at this level, in, in, anywhere between the axilla and the, and the clavicle, you should really look at it in terms of the, um, the, the nerves and then work backwards to try and identify the level of injury. So we, if we just start off with the uh, uh, radial nerve and the axillary nerve, so just lift up your, your wrist, so it's got a strong radial nerve, lift up your fingers, lift up hard, hard, it's good, strong finger extension and lift up your thumb and good thumb extension, uh, as well as he's got intake deltoid, and make your arm straight, make your arm straight, push, push, push hard against me, he's got a good tricep, so his whole radial nerve, which means going from distal to proximal, means the posterior cord is intact, so at this level it's all about the cords, eh? uh, the, uh, the M shape of the plexus around the, the uh, axillary artery. Next we'll look at the um, um, so I'm just going to draw on this patient. So you've got the uh, lateral cord continues as the muscular cutaneous nerve and then it gives off the lateral limb of the medial nerve. Then you get the medial cord, gives off the medial limb of the medial nerve and then continues as the ulnar nerve. So that's muscular cutaneous nerve, muscular cutaneous nerve. This is the ulnar nerve and then the, the medial limb and lateral limb of the medial nerve continue as the medial nerve. So, what's in these different fibers? So, muscular cutaneous nerve is working, bend. Bend, of, bend of, um, so you've got very strong biceps. In, in the lateral limb of the medial nerve is FCR and pronator teres. So you can see if this guy flexes his wrist, bend up, bend up your wrist like this, I can palpate, it's difficult to see, it's very strong FCU, no FCR, nothing. As well as he has no pronator teres. Keep your arm in, in turn, turned in, other way, other way. There's no palpable, pronated teres here. So that means there's no function in this. If we look at the medial cord, that continues as the ulnar nerve. So if we look at the ulnar nerve, um, look at the ulnar nerve, the FCU is working, bend up like this. Uh, FCU is working, the ulnar nerve intrinsics are working, the long flexor to the little finger bend there, bend this one, is working, the ulnar nerve intrinsics are working. Lift up to the roof, push up, push up hard, there's some weakness, but just lift up that way. There's some, there's some power, but there's definitely some weakness. So there's, there's a little bit of injury to the uh, uh, medial cord slash ulnar nerve. Um, but what you can immediately see here, are the, are the, it really has got some trophic changes, some burns uh, from damage to the uh, radial side of the hand. So in this lateral limb of the medial nerve also runs the sensory fibers C5 and C6 to the medial nerve distribution. And then in, in there, uh, in the medial limb of the medial nerve, runs the, all the, F, the FBL, bend there, got no FBL, all the, FD, uh, the FDSs and then the FDP to index and middle. So make a fist for me. You can see a typical high ulnar nerve, uh, medial nerve palsy with uh, the benediction or the, or the trigger sign or the shooting sign. And um, it's got no thena uh, muscles. Bit, bit, finger thumb across, no, no palpable thena muscles. So here we've got a high medial nerve palsy with typical sensory distribution deficit. And um, the injury is therefore either at the level of the two limbs of the medial nerve or the medial nerve itself, or the, uh, and a partial injury to the uh, ulnar nerve. At the time of surgery, it was explored and was noted to be macroscopically intact. So presumably it's due to the um, false aneurysm that formed or from retraction by the uh, surgeons, uh, difficult to, to say, but there's no macroscopic injury that needed surgery. So the, the recovery is expectant. We already see uh, an advancing tunnel sign. So if I tap him along the course of the median nerve, tell me when you get the shock. Yeah. Yes. About over there, he's already getting a, a, a tunnel sensation of a of a shock-like feeling extending into the medial nerve distribution implies that there's continuity and early recovery. So this is probably a uh, 
neuropraxia. It's not an axon of mesis, otherwise it would take much longer to recover. Remember, an axon of mesis still has to recover at a millimeter a day, whereas a neuropraxia recovers quickly. So this is a neuropraxia, and we expect a full recovery. Um, so we don't really need to talk about the reconstruction. But this is a typical high median nerve palsy. Make a fist with a typical with the, the benediction or the, or the pointing or the gun or the trigger sign. Okay.